Hi all, Skids Tweak here. Today we're going to be doing a video on the new TNT Prims 2.0. We're going to be going through all its features, functions, how to use it. I think you'll get a lot out of this video. So let's get started. So you just get your TNT Prims. You've unpacked it. First thing you want to do is take and drop this object on the ground. It's named TNT Prims Drop Me on the Ground to get started. Now you'll see what you've just dropped out is the new TNT Prims HUD 2.0. It's going to give you a set of instructions now on things you need to do before you can actually use the HUD. I'm not going to go through each of the instructions right here in this video just in case those instructions ever change but it's very simple. It's just going to be requesting some permissions, you got to repack an object, and then you take it and you wear it as a HUD. That's it. So let's take a look at the new TNT Prims 2.0 HUD. Up top here we display messages, questions, and then down below is the menus. This is the default menu, mode, new active, deactive, clear, functions, options, help, and we'll be going through each one of those in just a second. And then you got the target on the right hand side. Now, the target's new, and I'll be showing how that works as well in just a few minutes. So let's take a look at some of the stuff in the default menu. You got mode at the top. We click that. You can see we get a large list of all the different modes. If you're not familiar with what a mode is, a mode is basically a tool. And you switch between these different tools while you're working to get different types of functionality. Now, if I totally just confused you, don't worry. As we go along, you'll see exactly what I mean. For now, I'm just going to click the back button and we go back to the main menu. Next on the main menu is new active. New active actually allows you to change which prim is active when you're working with the TNT prims interface. I know that sounds very confusing, but we're going to go through and show you exactly how this works in just a bit. Deactivate removes all interfaces that are currently up on Prims. Again, you'll see that in action in just a few moments. Next on the main menu is the Clear button. The Clear button is brand new in TNT Prims 2.0. What the Clear button does is it turns all your TNT Prims back into normal Prims. And next under the main menu is Functions. Functions you can turn on and off the TNT Prims that you have out. And you can use the Texture Replace function. This is really useful. I'll be showing this off later on in the video as well. I am clicking the back button to head back to the main menu. And the next thing on the main menu is Options. Under Options you got two categories of options. You got HUD and you got Interface. Under the HUD, you can change the font, change the volume of the HUD. You can also turn off texture caching. I added this option because some older video cards do slow down when you try to cache a whole bunch of textures. So if you find that uh, you put on the TNT Prems HUD and it slows down a little bit for you, you might want to consider turning this off. And now I'm clicking back and let's look under Interface. Now the interface options all deal with the interface when you bring up the interface for the TNT prims. Um, for example, the first option here is res type. How should that interface be res? Should it be temp on res? If it's temp on res, it doesn't use any prims on your land, but it only lasts 60 seconds. If it's normal, then it'll last forever, but it's going to use prims on your land. Most of the time, I actually recommend people come in here, go to Options, Interface, Res Type, and change it to Normal, just so the interface stays up. But by default, I left it Temp on Res, just in case someone's using it on land that uh, really can't handle one extra prim. What else do we have under Interface? We got Permissions. We can set the permissions to allow anyone in a particular group or everyone to interact with your TNT prims while they're out on the ground. Um, this is a great way to do a little bit of collaboration. Also under interface options is special effects. Special effects are just a bunch of different special effects I added to the TNT prims just for fun. If you get a chance to play with it, you probably won't want to keep them on all the time, but uh, they're fun to play with. So. And while I'm here, I want to mention too that under every single menu is a help button. That isn't a generic help. 
If you actually click that, it'll give you detailed information about that menu and its items. The only button that won't do that is Help under the main menu. So let's take a look at that. Now, most of these menu items are pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to hit on one, Tutorial. As you work with the TNT Prims, it'll give suggestion tips and, and basically give you instructions on how to use the mode you're currently working in. If you find this annoying after a while, which I have to admit I do after a bit, you can turn that off here. So to turn it off, just go into Help, Tutorial, and choose No. Okay, now that we've gone through all that boring stuff, let's get into some of the meat and potatoes. Uh, let's cover some of the basic concepts of how the TNT prims work. So, let's start off. I'm just going to build a couple prims. And I'm just doing a shift drag to copy those. And I've got these four prims here. You can see I can't touch any of them. I'm going to cam up to them and to cam, I'm just clicking my Alt key and clicking my mouse and dragging my mouse at the same time. And that allows me to move my cam very easily. This is kind of an important concept to understand with the TNT prims, just because to make a prim a TNT prim, you cam up to it and then click the target button. And look at that. It's now a TNT prim. We can do that to the others. Oops. And if it's a linked set, so let me link these two together. Oops. You can see I can cam up to just one of them and click. And now both of them are TNT prims. To change them back to normal prims, I just click clear. And looky there, they are normal prims again. Nothing to it. So I'm going to target these one more time. And now we're going to take a look at what does it mean to have an, an active prim and a non-active prim. So when you touch the TNT prims, an interface comes up. I'm actually going to change it to snap mode. Notice I didn't have to remove the interface to, to actually make that change. Again, let's talk about new active and active prims. You can see that this prim here has a slight glow to it. And it's also the very first prim I touched. That is the current active prim. And this is a non-active prim. You can see it doesn't have that glow to it. So what does that mean? Well, the active prim is the prim that changes. If I actually snap this up, you can see that the prim that moved was the glowy one, the active prim. To change which prim is the active prim, you can click new active on the HUD and then touch the prim. And wow, there you go. It's now the active prim. So I could snap it up and there you go. I'm just going to click the more button and choose from the menu deactivate and it removes the interface. I could have just clicked deactivate on the HUD as well. Okay, so now that we've gotten through all that stuff, let's take a look at all the different modes. They're the tools that that really define what the TNT prims can do. So I'm going to click mode on the TNT prims HUD. Let's quickly go through these. Snap is great for aligning your prims. Gap is great for filling gaps. Rock Classic allows you to match rotations of other prims or turn a prim 45 degrees. Move allows you to move large numbers, a large number of prims quickly and easily. Link allows you to quickly link up prims together. Rot Scale will rotate a prim's perspective. Texture Mode aligns your textures. It's my favorite to show off. Rot Side will match the rotation of two sides together. 
So let's take a look at snap mode first. It's probably the most popular mode there is. It allows you to align the corners, centers, hollows, any part of a prim to another prim. I'm going to click or I'm going to I'm going to hit control B on my keyboard to bring up the build window and I'm going to make some shapes. And let's not just stick with boxes this time. Let's I have a tendency to just make boxes, but the TNT prims works with every shape there is except for mesh. Um and that's for technical reasons. And now that I've gotten these created I'm going to select each one of them and I'm doing that by holding shift so that they're all selected and I'm gonna hit control L to link them together why am I linking them together well it's just easier to target one TNT or one prim to make them all TNT prims than it is to target all of them individually okay so first thing I want to do is I want to align this box to this half cylinder so which prim would I touch first? I would touch the box first. Why would I touch the box first? It's the one I want to move. I want to move it so it lines up with this cylinder here. And you can see that the box that I've touched has a slight glow. This means it's the active TNT prim. I'm going to touch that corner. This is where I want to align and then I'm going to cam over here and I'm going to touch this corner and you can see those two corners came together perfectly and the prim that moved was the one that's glowing the active prim so it's always the active prim that moves so now what I want to do is I want to put this cylinder on top of this cylinder on top of this half cylinder I think that would look good so first thing I need to do is bring up the interface the interface is up but it's not the active prim if I want this prim to be the one to move I need to make it the active prim so I'm gonna click new active and now just touch anywhere on that prim and you can see that that glow moved from this box to this prim I'm gonna just touch this corner here or this spot here because it's really not a corner and touch this spot here and there you go look at that it moved right on top of there and again let's do the same thing I want to move this half sphere on top of the cylinder I'm going to touch this prim to bring up its interface I'm going to click new active on the HUD to, and then touch it so now it's got that glow it's the one that's going to move and I'm going to touch that spot there and let's touch the spot right there now I'm going to remove the interface by clicking deactivate and looky there everything is aligned perfectly okay so let's take a look at gap next there's actually two ways to use gap and we'll go through both of those right here I'm gonna hit control B on my keyboard to bring up the build window I'm going to res up some boxes and that looks good I just did a shift drag to do a copy of each one of those and now I'm going to target each one of them and da, da, da. they are now TNT prims now you can think of the space between these prims as gaps and they're the gaps we want to fill so let's fill the gap here and the gap here so which prim is it that I want to change I want the center prim to change well resize the center prim to fill these gaps and I'm going to touch the two others they are now non-active prims you can see the center one's got that glow so it's the one that's going to change I'm going to touch that corner there and that corner there and looky there it resized the active prim but left the other side stationary so if we want to do the other side we just click two corners now keep in mind that uh, they don't actually have to be lined up very well let me show you exactly what I mean I'm just gonna resize some of these now if I touch this corner here and this corner here you can still see it worked 
Also note that you can actually treat spaces like this as gaps. So I could click here and click here. And look at that, it resized that gap. And here and here. So gap is a very, very useful function. Let's go to the other side. I'm going to click there and there. It even works at odd rotations. Let me show you that real quick. I'm just going to size these interfaces down a bit. And select them all and then just give them some odd random rotation. And now let's do it. Get me. Perfect. Awesome. So that's the first way to use gap mode. What I did is I clicked a spot on the active prim and I clicked a spot on the non-active prim and it gapped. So what's the second way to use it? I'm going to delete these. Let's res up two new prims. And one of them I'm going to hollow out and cut. I want to cut to 0.25. That way we're just cutting away one side. Oops. Okay, and let's say I want to resize this prim to fit perfectly inside of this hollow area. I'm going to resize it down a little bit. That way it's more bigger change. Okay, let's target each one. So I'm going to target that one and let's target this one. Okay, now the prim I want to resize is which one? It's this one, so I'm going to touch it first to bring up its interface. It is now the active prim. It's the one that's going to change. I'm now going to touch this one, which is going to become a non-active prim. There it goes. Okay, so the way this works is what we do is we touch two spots on the non-active prim. And it'll resize the active prim the exact distance between the two spots we touched. I know that sounds very confusing, but let me show you exactly how it works. So I know here that I want to resize in the X direction because I see this texture that says X right here. And it corresponds to between these two spots. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to touch this spot here. I'm going to touch this spot here, and it's asking me now, which direction do I want to resize the active prim? I could go X, Y, or Z, but I want X because I can see it on the texture. And you can see it resize the active prim the exact distance between the two spots I touched. I'm going to do it on this side here. And this time, I know I want to go Y because I can see it on the texture. Looky there. And let's just resize it in the Z direction. I don't actually think I resized it in the Z direction, but maybe. Yep, I did. Okay, now let's snap it up. I'm just going to click the Mode button and choose Snap. Touch that corner there. Touch that corner there. Looky there. Let's deactivate it. It fits perfectly inside that hollow. And that is the second way to use gap. And let's take a look at Rock Classic next. I'm going to res up two prims here. And I'm just going to give one of them a random rotation. Rock Classic basically allows you to match the rotation of other objects. Or rotate the active prim 45 degrees. So I'm going to touch this prim here because it's the one I want to change. I want it to be the active prim and I'm going to touch this one to make it a non-active. Now watch what happens when I touch this one. This one matches the exact same rotation. But then I could also 
touch this one and rotate it 45 degrees in any direction I want. So this can actually be pretty handy. And that's Rock Classic. Okay, let's take a look at move mode next. I'm going to go over to the mode button, click that. From the menu, choose move. What move does is allows you to move a whole bunch of prims all at once, just like they're linked together. But they're not linked together. Okay, so I'm going to just target these really quick. Turn them into TNT prims. And now I'm going to touch one, make it the active prim. And the first thing it does is it asks me, how close does something need to be in order to follow? And you can choose 10, 20, 30 meters, all the way up to the entire region all at once. So it'll do all the TNT prims on the entire region. I'm just going to choose 10 meters. And now I can move this prim and everything that was within 10 meters now follows. Now if I move this close to another project within 10 meters of it, it's not going to start following. It was just the ones that were at within 10 meters at the very beginning. So you don't got to worry about that. Um, rotations work. So if you got this really big build and you need to move it down, this is a great way to do this. One thing to keep in mind that if you Let's say you got a mansion, it's way up in the sky, and you pile drive it down to the ground by changing the, um, the Z height down to zero or something. A script cannot move a prim into the ground. So when you came down to the ground, you would actually notice that your mansion's all messed up, prims everywhere. The easiest way to fix it is just to literally pull the active prim up out of the ground and all of them will go right back to normal just like they were before so it will not destroy your um your mansion on you you just got to pull it out of the ground we also have this quick dialog box that allows you to do some uh, interesting things you can send them 50 meters north south east west up down and you can change that to 100 meters 200 meters. I'm going to send this up 200 meters. It just went up 200 meters. Back down 200 meters. Look at that. So it's really easy to move large number of prims that are not linked together. And that's move mode. Okay, let's go over to the mode menu and see what mode we need to cover next. Link mode. Link mode's pretty cool. Link mode allows you to quickly and easily link some prims together. Uh, you can select things and just hit Control L and link it together, but this has some actually pretty cool benefits. I'm going to hit Control B and just res up a prim here. And I'm going to copy it over a couple times. And let's just pretend that these are all nice and linked together and that's a floor on my house or something like that. And I'm going to you know just just make some walls and we're, we're having to stretch our imagination here but uh, you know so I'm going to target each one make them TNT prim okay so they're now all TNT prims oh, did I miss one There we go. And they're all not linked together. They're all just completely separated. I am going to choose link from the mode menu. And I'm going to touch this one here. Now the first thing it does is it asks for permissions to link. I'm going to click yes. And next thing it does is it asks, what type of mode would you like me to use to link things up? There's smart mode, which tries to link everything at the exact same Z height. And usually all your floors or your walls will most likely be all at the exact same Z height. So smart is pretty cool. I'm going to use smart. And it takes a few seconds. But you can see they're all linked together now. And sometimes you'll get these try to link invalid, but target's invalid. That's normal. 
there's the the algorithm used to determine what can be linked and what can't be linked is so complex I didn't bother to implement it I just go ahead and I try to link everything that fits the bill and uh, yeah it worked out pretty good so those are all linked but that one's not linked as you can see and that's with using smart let's I'm gonna go ahead and touch this one again and give it permissions again and now I'm going to choose touch and touch will just link everything I touch and you can see it is linked now and then there's everything and when it says everything it means everything it can be a little dangerous because if I used everything right now it would try to link this platform that I'm standing on probably those fences over there it would try literally to do everything so we do not need to do that now but that's link mode okay only two modes left and texture mode is up it's my favorite one to show off I'm going to create a prim and then copy it and every time I copy it I'm going to give it a 90 degree rotation And I'm going to do the exact same thing again, except for this time, I'm going to copy all four of them up and rotate them back that direction. We're getting a lot of different prims, all at different rotations, several different faces, and we're going to align all those faces together. I'm just trying to approximate positioning. It doesn't have to be perfect for this. And now I'm going to select all of them and link them together why am I doing that well I just want to link them together so I can target one and I have to target every single prim and there you go they're all TNT prims now with all the other modes the non-active prim would never change but with texture mode the non-active prim will actually align to the active prim uh, which is a good thing, trust me. I'm going to touch this bottom one here to bring up the interface on here. And this is Texture Mode Active Prim Interface. I can actually click and drag this texture around on the face of this prim. I can rescale it. Scale it down really tiny. Oh, getting a bit of lag. Sometimes that happens. Position it vertically. Position it horizontally. Anything I can do in the texture tab, I can actually do here. I can mirror it, rotate it, um, give it colors, turn on the brightness. And there's even an undo button that'll undo any changes that have been made since the interface came up. You can see it took it right back to the way it was. Let's go ahead and scale it down some more again and color it again. There's also a zero button that'll take it back to the zeros so uh, the textures will be back to one-on-one -on -one repeats, positioning zeros, it just sets it to a default position. Um, I can set the shiny, the alpha, the glow and uh, yeah it's really handy. Not only that and all this but you can align all these other prims to it so I'm going to touch this prim here to bring up its interface and you can see it just align that texture to this texture let's do all the others I'm going to touch them one thing to keep in mind when dealing with a large set of link prims like this and bringing up the interface on several of them is you got to go a little bit slower um, because there's actually only one script that's handling all these requests to bring up an interface. Uh, so it's a little bit slow with when dealing with one complete link set. If they were unlinked, you could click it as fast as you want and it would go really quick. But when, when dealing with one linked set, you just got to go a little bit slow. What happens if you don't? Well, the interface might not come up and you got to click it again. <laughs> no big deal. But I just thought I'd let you guys know about that. 
And you can see all these faces, all these different rotations, all have aligned to this default bottom prim here. And if I move it, they all adjust. Now you can see they're not the exact same texture and they're not the exact same color and well, brightness isn't on any of them. So let's click copy to copy over every single attribute from the active prim to these non-active prims. That includes the texture, the color, and any attribute of that side basically. There they go. I'm going to click deactivate to remove the interface and looky there all these faces and all these different rotations are perfectly aligned textures. That is texture mode. There's actually one other thing I want to discuss about texture mode real quick. Texture mode is, is not the best at going around corners but it does work sometimes. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks you can do that when you're trying to do it and it doesn't work it'll actually work for you after you do these tricks hopefully <laughs> so i've targeted these two prims to make them the active prim i'm going to go over to mode menu make sure i'm on texture mode and just touch these two interfaces And you can see that this prim is actually not aligning correctly to this prim. I'm going to click deactivate. What happens if we go the other direction? Yeah, it still didn't work. Okay, so that didn't work. Let's go over to the mode button. And I'm going to choose rot scale. And I'm going to touch this prim here. And I'm just going to rotate it once that direction. There it goes. Click deactivate. Now go back to texture mode. And let's try this one more time. Hopefully. And look at there. It actually, it actually matched up now. So yeah, around corners doesn't always work perfectly. Keep that in mind that, uh, if you change the rotation of the prim, most likely it's going to work. Um, you can also change the rotation of the entire build. So I could actually do this. And there's a good chance it would work after I did that as well. Uh, just a couple tips and tricks to get around corners. Another gotcha with texture mode is textures don't align very well when not when at weird rotations. So let's say I have this right here. And let's bring it up now and try it. You can see at this weird rotation, these textures aren't aligning at all. And, and there's really nothing I could do but set it back to like a zero rotation to actually get it to work correctly. I tried, trust me, I tried to get this to work, but uh, I just couldn't get it to work. So, two gotchas to keep in mind when dealing with texture mode. Okay, we got one last mode to look at, and then we're going to take a look at functions texture replace. So, the last mode is rot side. Rot side allows you to match up the rotation of two objects so that the two sides you touch match rotations perfectly. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to give this one a small taper and give this one a big taper. And let's target these. I'm going to touch this one to make it the active prim. It's the one I want to change. Touch this one. Now, I want to match the rotation of this side so that this prim is turned in such a fashion that it matches up perfectly with this side. If you've ever tried to do this by hand, you will know that it is literally impossible. Um, and doing it in code turned out to be really hard too. Uh, it doesn't always work perfectly. I'll show you though. You can see here though, it, it did work perfectly. Let's deactivate it. These two sides match up 
100% perfectly. But let's do this again. I'm going to delete these and make two more boxes and again give them tapers. Let's do the opposite direction this time. Target them. And I'm going to make this one the active prim this time and make this one the non-active prim. Mode, right side, and just touch the two sides I want to match up. And you can see that that side doesn't actually match up. It's, it's turned the wrong direction for one, but you can actually take and just do a complete 180 and it now matches up. So sometimes you got to do some small adjustments. I actually added this dialog box as well to do some quick rotations so that uh, you can try out a bunch of different things. Most of these aren't even close. But just in case this does happen, you can flip between them and one of them will surely match up. And that is Rot Side. Okay, that was all the modes. Let's take a look at Functions Texture Replace. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a couple prims. And this is going to be the floor of our new house. I'm going to just target them real quick, make them TNT prims. Okay, so Functions Texture Replace actually lists all the textures you use on your build, and you can literally drag textures from your inventory on top of this, let go, and look at that, it replaced everywhere that texture was with the texture you just dragged to it. This is an absolute incredible time saver. If you've ever tried to try out several different textures on your floor, usually you gotta open your build window, select sides, um, and select every single one of the sides, and then open the texture window, select your texture, Close out the build window because you got all those blue and yellow lines running everywhere and you can't really get a feel for how it looks. And then you got to repeat that entire process to try the next texture out. It is incredibly difficult to do. Very time consuming if you're going to try more than say three or four textures it takes you 30 seconds to do it. But here I can just literally drag and look how many I'm trying out all at once. I mean, in the time it takes you to do one, I've tried out 10, 15 different textures. So this is really handy for changing up the look of your place without wasting a lot of time selecting all those faces. Big time saver. One little gotcha. Um, I'm going to copy this one over. And this one actually has a transparent center. If I actually try to drag a texture into that transparency area, you can see it, it didn't work correctly. What you got to do is you got to drag it onto where the texture is. So just be aware of that one little gotcha. Nothing I can do about it really. But uh, yeah, that is texture replace. To get out of texture replace, you just touch anywhere and boom, you're back to normal. Whew, I think we just about finished. I think we covered everything. I hope I didn't put you to sleep. <laughs> um, I know this is a long video, but uh, there's a lot to it. But it's fairly simple once you learn the basics and understand the fundamentals. Remember, if you ever have any questions, problems, or issues, just IM me in world. My name is Skids Tweet, and uh, happy building!